Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. The question has been asked, how do continuous triggers, how do switched triggers work? What's the logic behind them in the mission editor? Real easy one to answer. Thank you for I'm Wolf for telling me this. I never figured this stuff out myself. I'll get my beautiful boys to help me out with it. So, uh, I'm going to put a plane in and it's going to be something fast. Something I haven't flown in a while. Pew, 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 MiG-19. MiG-21, MiG-19. Okay, we're going to put it at uh, 500 feet and whatever, 300 knots. Okay, that's just our testing vehicle. We need to change the name to Super Cup. Okay, done. Uh, next, we're gonna to go to the triggers. Into the triggers we go. Now, you'll note, whenever you create a trigger, there's four types you can have. You can have it once, continuous action, switched action, or mission to start. And all of these four are just a basic logic test. Everything in here is just a basic logic test, just like a, how a computer works. Once means that it will evaluate the situation as per the conditions and the actions that we've got here, or the conditions at least. It will evaluate it every, you know, 1,000 milliseconds, every one second. And once the conditions have been achieved, then it will do that action once, and that's it. It will never evaluate again. Continuous actions means that it will evaluate the conditions every 1000 milliseconds every one second and every second that the conditions evaluate as true it will run that action so if we are constantly triggering the condition to be true then it will constantly run the action every one second so it limits it to once every second just to keep the amount of processing that this has to do down. Otherwise, you know, missions would run really slowly and stuff like that. So only every 1,000 milliseconds, it will actually do the evaluation. Next, switch condition, which seems to be confusing most people. This is, again, evaluated like everything. Every one second, it evaluates the conditions that you're going to put in. And if the conditions evaluate is true, it will do the action. It will not, though, do the action again until the condition has become false and then true again. Okay, um, now it's hard for me to explain it by verbally like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you to make it a lot more obvious. Uh, and then finally, on mission start, that evaluates just once on the mission start, obviously. So first of all, we're going to have a continuous action and uh, we're going to have... Uh, Units, AGL, uh, altitude higher than, uh, um, this is in meters, remember, so if you think this is feet, it's not, and that's really confusing how they do that, but it's meters. So I'm going to go above 1,000 feet, what's that in meters, it's 330 meters, so if above 330 meters, condition is true, then do a thing, and that thing is just going to be, uh, why don't we make it a uh, message, uh, testing and make that run for one second because we're evaluating this every second we don't want it to run more than one second otherwise they'll just accumulate on top of each other in fact why not to let them accumulate okay so we now got continuous action trigger it's going to evaluate this every second and if we if the evaluation of this condition is true for above a thousand feet then it's going to send a message out okay so we're going to unpause that now and just check we're at a decent altitude whoops that was a close one let's put ourselves at 500 feet 300 knots. Uh, whoops, I forgot to make him client. Pion, client. I think that's it, isn't it? If we go. So you can see our altitude down to the bottom in feet. Watch what happens when it goes above 1,000. There you go. See at the top there, every second it's evaluating the condition and we're getting the action every one second exactly. And when we go below again, and it stopped. And if I went above again, it would start again. And that's how a continuous. Uh, a logic test a continuous evaluation worked okay so it's very simple so now if we went to ping uh, hang on where are we going here if we would change this to switched condition and left everything else the same and off we go so we're going to go above a thousand feet there it goes it's triggered it but only once now the only way to get that to trigger again now is to now evaluate it, it, the condition false which means going below a thousand feet And then we're going to go above a thousand feet again. And there we go. We are now uh, doing it again. And so that's how a switch condition works. Note that the only uh, small thing you just have to be aware of is bearing in mind it only evaluates the condition every, every second. Is that for that evaluation to be negative, we have to make sure that we are 
under a thousand feet in this example for that particular check uh, that that that's that on one second check uh, so i couldn't just dip below for a couple of milliseconds and then come back up that wouldn't work i need to dip below a thousand feet for that uh, one uh, you know that one second check and then come back up so it's just a little thing to bear in mind so that's really the best way i can explain it and that's the difference now i've shown you what they mean logically and how they're evaluated you now need to go and put that in practice in your mission uh, i can't tell you how to do that but now you understand the basic logic of those uh, evaluations then um, uh, you can work from there really uh, nothing else to say it's all pretty simple hope that helps see you later